Welcome modelers to my trumpeter 1 to 200 scale Titanic build series and this is part 7 and this part will deal with the hull electricals. The first thing that I wanted to do was to be able to disconnect the ship from the electricals that are contained within the stand. So I had to come up with some way of disconnecting the ship. And what I found was these little connectors, these are mic connectors. Um, this is a 10 prong mic connector, there's 8 prong as well that you can get on eBay. This is the male end and you just solder the wires to the back end of it. And then this is the female end and you just take the housing off and then you can solder the wires to the connectors on the inside of this housing. And the end result is, let me show you the, here is the female end with all the wires connected. I made them long enough so I could mess around with them and get them to the length I needed but that's the female end and that's ready to go when I need it to build the stand and the wire that I used is just this I think this is thermostat wire you get kinda of like at Lowell's or Home Depot but it's 18 gauge and then you got seven wires in it and it's just very stiff wire so it's solid copper it's not stranded so you might want to get stranded because the stranded will be easier to manipulate than this this is pretty stiff then I drilled a hole in the hull and put the male end in the bottom of the hole at the center then I connected that to a terminal block so that I have access to connect all the wires that I would need. It's probably overkill, but I'd rather have too many possibilities than not enough. Then the first step, I put in this aluminum foil. This is kind of like stuff you get at the auto store. It's, it's real sticky tape that you would use to patch up exhausts but it has a nice reflective coating on one end. I uh, probably put a little too much in here because it, it's going to create some hot spot because it's a, like a mirror. But then the next step was to install LED strips. So I just put one long double density LED strip for the front part of the hull. And then I connected that to the terminal block where I would have power and ground so the red is for power black is for the ground and then for the rear circuit I had to raise this part up because of the motors and this first section here is double density also and then behind the motors since I have the propeller shafts in the way I had to go to the side so I use single density LED strips for the middle two sections here and then for the rear section is back to the double density and then I just connected them using magnet wire it's 28 gauge and green is for negative and red is for positive and then all these little LED sections I just connected to one circuit and then I connected that to the terminal blocks where I connected the forward LED strip light. Ground is black and red is power. Now I do have a temporary set of wires in here so that I can kind of test this out. Uh, what did I put all the superstructure on top so everything seems to be lighting up pretty good. Now the problem I'm running into is this is a big hull. And when you look 
in the portholes, you can see the portholes on the other side and it just looks like one big hollow ship. So in order to solve that problem, I made some dividers that I'm just going to use to divide the ship in half and separate the hull halves so that you can't see the other side and look through the ship. It looks like it's a solid ship with decks and walls and everything. So I built this little hull uh, bulkhead here. Now you notice that this bulkhead is loose on this side only. The reason for that is when you put part number W1 or which is a C deck onto the hull, this hull separates about another eighth of an inch. And then when you put the bow deck on top of here as well, it separates even a little bit more too. So this stuff is too flimsy to hold that kind of stress. So after I glue in C deck, there'll be a space there and then I'll just put a spacer in there and kind of glue it in there together to just give it some support but it's not going to be a bulkhead to help hold this apart I'll just let the decks to do that but it's their design to help secure this so this isn't just wobbling around so I made a bunch of these and I just made them all fit right to the hole bulkheads here forgive me if I'm not got this centered this is hard to do with just one hand so with that center divider in all the way that keeps you from seeing the portholes on the opposite side when you look through a porthole and gives the illusion that this ship is solid and it's got decks and everything. Now, the thing I added was on the Titanic, the first class uh, dining area was big enough that it ran the full width of the ship. So if you look through the deck, you would see the other side of the portholes. So to give that illusion, I did some cutting out some notches here in these dividers to simulate that the dividers that I didn't cut out this is where the uh, funnel boiler room smokestack connections would run you know here and here so and here so you know it's not a complete open area in that dining room there are some things in the way so I looked all this stuff up on some Titanic plans, so I kind of got a good idea where these would be. So once I got that situated, the next thing was to do, I put these little tabs in here to give me a little bit of support on these various spots of the hull to support the deck. So first thing I did was make a little... C deck here, or D deck actually. And for some, this may be overkill. It may be. I just want to give this area of the ship the illusion that there's a dining area. So that you look in these portholes, you see the portholes all the way across. And I use very thin plastic sheet <clears throat> so that light could still come up through it. Now the next step was I needed to put the roof because I don't want to see through these D deck portholes up to C deck. So I put in the the part W1 which is the C deck. I put a little lip here on it so that the C deck could act as a roof here that I made. And again, forgive me, it's taken a while to get this going here. It's hard to hold the camera in one hand and get this all into the slots. Okay. <clears throat> so now I have the illusion 
that we have a dining area with a floor and a roof and this is thin enough sheet I did reinforce it a little bit to, you know, on the bottom but this top is not reinforced except for here this is where the wires have come up and they'll still be hidden because I have some of the walls that extend down so that the wires won't be seen through the portholes either but that gives the illusion of a dining area in the Titanic so that's what I've done so far I think that's about it for the hull. It lights up pretty good. Um, there might be some dark spots in some areas, but I haven't done all my tests yet. But that gives you a little rundown of what I'm doing for the lighting for the hull. So, until the next video, stay tuned.